New COVID cases in America have recently reached all-time highs. Quick, someone call Guinness. No, not the record keepers. I need a drink. With this new achievement, I thought I'd talk about our federal response to this issue. Now, some of you are probably looking at this video's runtime and thinking, boy, that's a lot of time to dedicate to saying we're doing nothing. While the federal government has deferred the response almost entirely to the states, they are currently engaged in a pretty massive COVID vaccine operation called Operation Warp Speed. So set your phasers to heal as we hunt for the gear. First, the basic question. What is Operation Warp Speed? Well, it's a program of government contracts with private businesses designed to secure pharmaceuticals, such as therapeutics and a vaccine. Now, that may sound super dry for something called Operation Warp Speed, but I might not be making a video about it if it was Operation Let's Sign a Bunch of Contracts with Big Pharma. Once you scrape back that initial layer of meh, though, it gets pretty interesting pretty fast. And not in the, oh, the president just retweeted another QAnon conspiracy theory type of interesting. The biggest innovation in this program is that America is contracting pharmaceutical companies to start manufacturing massive batches of potential vaccines while they're still being tested. We're talking about hundreds of millions of doses being prefabricated from some of our favorite companies, like Pfizer and Moderna. This has the risk of Americans spending billions on manufacturing millions of defective vaccines. But it also means that if an American company strikes gold and the trials work, we have a ton of vaccines on standby. Simply put, the biggest payoff for Operation Warp Speed could be the rapid deployment of a vaccine once it is approved. The upfront investment for drug companies to produce vaccine doses without knowing whether they will ever be used is the kind of thing that the federal government is best positioned to do. Don't worry, we could probably unload some of those defunct vaccines on Alex Jones once he sells through his backlog of hydroxychloroquine. Unfortunately for President Trump, warp speed might not be fast enough. Medical consensus seems to be that the FDA will approve a vaccine in best case scenario February, but more likely to between that time and the end of summer. And let me just crunch those numbers really quickly. That's more than 10 days away. So it might not literally be warp speed, but the record for fastest vaccine up to this point after initial infection is four years. So if we can pull this off, that's a Guinness record I wouldn't mind shattering. This brings us to part two of warp speed, distribution. Once this thing gets approved, we have to get it moving. The CDC recently announced that they're contracting out central distribution to McKesson, who were in charge of distributing the H1N1 vaccine. Remember H1N1? Me neither. So they probably did a pretty good job. From that hub, they're alerting state, local, and tribal health departments that, hey, a huge shipment of vaccines is coming. So uh, get ready. I suspect they're probably going to be in demand. So that's the plan, and no, you didn't miss anything. It's pretty exciting and competently put together. Of course, it isn't without its criticism. Now, before I get into the criticism, there is one huge point that I want to emphasize. To quote Vox, a fairly left-leaning news source, Warp Speed's problems are more in its execution than its conception. In the end, the United States will likely be better off because the Trump administration threw money at this problem. But it could have gone better if the president had gotten out of his own way. Critics on both sides seem to be giving this program the polite golf clap. The criticisms I'm going to be pointing out are more Trump based than operations based. Now, there are two major points of contention. First, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Well, in this case, individual states can do mandatory vaccines, but the latest hotspots in the United States bring a new meaning to the term red state. Good luck messing with Texas. So what's the problem here? Well, it's kind of the Trump factor. People just don't trust that guy and the vaccine rush has been so politicized, it's hard to tell those skeptics that their fears are unfounded. 
Even if everything works perfectly and we have an effective vaccine delivered across the country, 49% of Americans are on the record saying that they won't take it. And that number is heading firmly in the wrong direction. The concern is, ironically, the biggest selling point of Operation Warp Speed in the first place, speed. Skeptics appear to believe that a vaccine will be pushed to market before it's fully understood. The most obvious examples of this have been instances of drug companies ignoring the fact that early trials were not including enough minorities, because those companies had a need, a need for speed. Don't worry though, the president was there to reassure the people by trying to block new COVID vaccination guidelines that would be the final nail in the coffin of guaranteeing that he couldn't buzzer shot a vaccine right before the election. Ironically enough, those new regulations were put in place, citing the need to give this vaccine some much needed street cred. Now, this skepticism certainly isn't an insurmountable problem, but it definitely puts the brakes on warp speed. To that effect, the West Coast and Nevada have all announced that they're going to independently dip their fingers into the vaccine secret sauce, look at some of the clinical trials, and see if they think it's good enough to distribute in their states. The other criticism of this warp speed is based on the idea of vaccine nationalism. Remember, we're talking about a public-private partnership, so definitely not a charity. If you're a poor country, get in line and hope you have the dough when you get to the window. These American pharmaceutical companies are already experiencing a huge influx of international cash for these potential vaccines. According to medical publication Stat News, in placing itself at the front of the line to receive vaccine doses from the Operation Warp Speed manufacturers, the United States has ignited a vaccine nationalism wildfire which is reaching conflagration status. Wealthy governments have locked down more than 4 billion doses of vaccines so far, with the United States topping the list with commitments for 800 million initial doses and options for another 1.6 billion doses on top of that. New bilateral purchase agreements are announced almost daily. Just when you thought American pharma companies couldn't get any richer. Now, America ordering more than potentially 2 billion doses of a vaccine might sound odd considering our population is 300 million people. We want to be super immune. Fact is though, there are quite a few different pharma companies racing to come up with this vaccine, and we're pre-ordering from all of them so we have enough for everyone when the best one gets FDA approval. Of course, not everyone is happy about this super capitalist arrangement. Let's get the rich countries on the lifeboats first. Women and children, help your government has deep pockets. The majority of the criticism comes from the World Health Organization, a group that has about as much influence on Trump's policies as Joe Biden's Twitter feed. They argue that the initial vaccines should be shared across all nations to protect health workers. In response, an anonymous Trump administration official argued, we want to get our oxygen mask on first, and then we're going to help the people around us. That's the closest you're ever going to come to this administration advocating mask use. And yes, we're taking the America first, buyer second approach to vaccine distribution. With all this in mind, a recent comment by the White House Chief of Staff makes a lot more sense. We're not going to control the pandemic. We are going to control the fact that we get uh, vaccines, therapeutics. Yup, now the name of the game is survive until we have a vaccine. The federales certainly aren't going to lend a helping hand between now and then. Until that undetermined date, your safety is between you and your state. Now, there has been next to no coverage of the actual federal government's COVID strategies. And I gotta tell you, personally, it's a bit of a relief to see that someone is doing something effective and uncontroversial. As a guy who lives in the hardest hit part of Queens, I really hope this works. And hey, if we have a vaccine by February, it'll be just in time for me to leave my apartment and enjoy the famously pleasant New York City dead of winter. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. 
Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.